Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tech Talk here at MarketStream.Live. My name is Joseph Kizik with the Kizik Group Securities offered by MoneyBlock. Here where we marry charts and technical analysis with option analysis, we're going to give you estimated moves, and we're going to focus on the commodity markets. Now, crude has been something that we've been talking about that's been on every major pundit's talking points list. You've heard it constantly. We had a bearish inventory report. We've had um, storage numbers that are still off the charts, so we have a glut of oil. But crude has found a bid, and you can see that over the last couple of weeks, it has been moving to the upside off of its lows at $47. So what I wanted to do is not only take a look at the charts to see where the established support and resistance levels are, but also give you some estimated moves being priced in by the options for these underlying commodity markets. And we're going to look at a few of them uh, so that you have some context going forward. You may want to uh, position, especially now that we're getting into this uh, potentially volatile spring session with all that's going on, both politically, economically, and we're into the earnings cycle. So let's take a look. Now, you're seeing crude right now. As I said, it's now gone over its 20, its 50, and its 200-day moving average. Now, with this being said, we have the crude markets moving nicely to the upside, but they're consolidating right here, bumping up against that 52 level. Now, a lot of people have said they don't have access or nor do they trade the futures market. So I'm going to take a look at USO. This is an ETF that tracks crude oil. It's up about 1.54 percent, 17 cents at 10.85. You can see that it is now hitting its head on that 200-day moving average. That is now resistance. Um, that's at right around 10.89. We'll call it 10.90. So about five cents away, and you, you're going to have uh, what would be considered now a new support level, which was once resistance. The market, uh, the options right now in USO are pricing in over the next 15 days, so the next two weeks, a 30 cent range. So you could see it as high as uh, 11 dollars and let's say 10 cents, or you could see it as low as 10.55. Um, that right there is constituting, um, you know, basically with this underlying at 30 cents, uh, roughly around a 4% range that you could potentially see. And with it moving 17 cents already today, it's already moved half that amount. So again, not a huge sense of big violent moves. The implied volatility rank is coming in at 17. If, if, I, if you see an implied volatility rank that's below 50 and specifically at 30, 20, 10 or lower, that's just basically telling you that the options marketplace isn't expecting big violent moves either up or down in the underlying. So crude right now, it's going to be in a battle zone right to establish further catalysts to the upside. Let's see if maybe that employment report tomorrow is one of the catalysts. Now let's switch gears and take a look at the um, grain markets and I want to look at it through the lens of DBC. This is the commodity index uh, ETF that tracks the corn, wheat and um, soybean markets. Uh, you can see that currently they've been trending to the upside going through their 20, their 50 and their 200 day moving average. That is now uh, all support levels. So the short term, intermediate term and the longer term bulls are now in more control than they have been in the past after a precipitous drop in the beginning of the March trading month. And now we're in April and it has rallied up nicely. With that being said, the options are pricing in around a 31 cent range in this $15 stock. So you're seeing about a 5% move being priced in. With that being said, also, you're seeing the implied volatility rank at roughly around 32. That's telling you that there is, out of all the other commodity markets, this is the one that is measuring the most potential for potential violent moves. Now, since it's below 50, I won't expect big violent moves. But again, since we are entering into the spring planting season, you could see some more volatility in this space, as well as with the economic reports that are coming out. Uh, that could add an, another layer uh, of potential volatility in this space. So with DBC trading at 1539 over the next two weeks has a 31 cent range in it. So you could see it at 1370 or 1570 or uh, basically at $15 for the next two weeks is what the options are pricing in as, for, as far as potential range. Now taking a look at GLD. GLD uh, gold has been in a very grinding consolidation 
uh, after initially in March having a nice pop to the upside, retook its midterm and short-term moving average resistance points, now bumping up against long-term resistance at the 200-day moving average. So short-term and intermediate-term goal bulls have took control early in the year, uh, but have been grinding for the last two weeks in this range. Uh, right now, the GLD options are pricing in the potential of a dollar ninety range in this hundred and nineteen dollar and twenty two cent underlying. Uh, really, that's telling you that they're looking at a one percent range for the next two weeks. Could that expand or contract? Of course it could, especially if we get any economic data that shakes this market or catalyzes the market either way. Um, and for gold, we'll watch the employment report as well as watch the bond markets uh, and the, the currency markets. Specifically, watch the dollar. Any dollar strength is going to put some potential pressure on gold and GLD. Also taking a look at silver. Uh, silver is considered a precious and an industrial metal because it is utilized in the chip sector. Uh, silver has been moving to the upside very nicely, and that's in conjunction out from a very solid move in the semiconductor uh, segment. And when we had uh, some dollar weakness earlier, you saw that silver popped up. Now dollar strength has continued, got over the 100 level, and we've been in a grind, but the bulls still in silver are in control. The SLV options that track the silver contract are uh, pricing in around a 37 cent range. So you could see it as high as uh, 1760 and some change or as low as 1690 and some change. Uh, so decent range for the next two weeks, uh, but the implied volatility rank is at 11, which is uh, telling me that there's not an expectation of huge violent moves. And that's all also represented in this grindy type of consolidation that we've had right around 1720 and some change. Uh, finally, we want to take a look at GDXJ. Uh, GDXJ is um, my canary in the coal mine for gold. Um, I have mentioned in previous segments that um, the Russell 2000 is my canary in the coal mine for the large cap sector. Uh, this is my canary in the coal mine for gold. If gold is going to get strong or weak, GDXJ tends to move in advance of that. Uh, we've seen it in a very tight consolidation, and the bulls have not been able to garner a lot of control. Um, and we've seen that gold has not been able to get more momentum to the upside. So GDXJ right now, the options are pricing in the potential of a $2.11 range. That means that we could see it as high as 38 and some change, or as low as 34 and some change over the next two weeks. The implied volatility rank is coming in at 22, so there's not a heightened expectation of big violent moves. But again, with all of the things that we have on the forefront, we have world leaders meeting, Trump and Xi meeting, that's U.S. and China. There could be a lot that could be discussed. Watch the Twitter feeds. Uh, you're also seeing that we're going to have a big economic report out tomorrow. We have the jobs reports coming out. Uh, so we'll see what the employment picture looks like on a non-farm payroll side uh, and, and see that employment number. And then we're going to be getting into the heart of earnings season. So we're going to watch the currency markets as earnings start to come out. And we start to see potentially uh, now that the nuclear option was uh, uh, enacted in the Senate to get uh, a, a new Supreme Court justice uh, put on the bench. Uh, now we have a political climate here in the United States that is unprecedented, right? We now have changed um, how they actually pass things uh, using this option that they have uh, implemented. So now we have a political landscape specifically here in the United States that is picked up in a little bit in volatility. Uh, so does that mean that now we start seeing either stuff move a little bit more in the direction of getting policy done? Or are we going to see even more gridlock? Who knows? But let's watch these markets that we've just covered here in Tech Talk. Uh, that could give you some more transparency on what's going on universally. And now you're going to be able to make better decisions in your portfolio. We'll see you here at 4.30 Eastern Time where I'm going to be covering up all the closing bell action here at MarketStream.Live. See you then.